Happening now at 6, Stormwatch 7 on weather alert. We have strong to severe storms in the forecast. I'll break it down hour by hour and talk about the impacts. Condo residents vent their anger following a devastating fire. It's ridiculous. They need to do something. Fire hydrants too weak to put it out. 7 News on Your Side reveals a history of safety issues that goes back years. Also new at 6, more complaints in D.C. about poor mail service. How long apartment residents here say they go without ever seeing a mail carrier at all? We begin the 6 o'clock hour now with some new video just coming into our newsroom, and it shows the destruction left behind as severe storms tear across the Deep South. Just look at this. This is video from Springdale, Arkansas, which is right near the Oklahoma border. And all day we've been seeing video of serious damage to homes and businesses. Police there just told our sister station they know of seven people hurt so far, two of them critically. Now we're keeping a very close eye on that because we're on Stormwatch 7 weather alert for our own severe weather in our area. So let's start off with Stormwatch 7's chief meteorologist, Bill Kelly. And Bill, let's talk about a couple of different waves of storms. What models are you seeing and what time are we looking for these things to blow in? So the, the two waves you're talking about, we got one that's going to be like late morning and into the early afternoon. Here's one model that shows at 11 o'clock in the morning, we could see some of these storms rumbling about through parts of Fairfax, Prince William County, pushing across the district here and there. But notice not widespread, but as I advance this and take you to, say, 8 o'clock at night, that's when the main line is going to be pushing closer to the D.C. metro. And it's along this line that we're going to see our greatest risk for severe storms. And, of course, I'll break this down. We'll pause it and take you throughout the day coming up in just a few minutes. In terms of our impacts for the afternoon and evening, flooding is going to be an impact. I see flooding is fairly low, but gusty winds, a high impact for us. We're going to have gusty winds without any storms, 40, 30 to 40 miles per hour. You add storms to it, and we could easily see wind gusts 55 60 miles per hour uh, no question hail it's a low threat but not zero tornadoes it's a low threat but not zero we're tracking all of it tomorrow and that is why we are on weather alert we're in the slight risk category from the storm prediction center not just here but that goes all the way up to parts of northern pennsylvania all the way down to north carolina but going back to that system you just talked about tonight there is a moderate risk four out of five in this area in the deep south it is a violent system rolling through there right now i'll show it to you and again track it out hour by hour in just a couple of minutes all right bill we'll see you in a few minutes and right now is a good time to pull out your phone or your tablet and download the free seven news app that you see the qr code right now on your screen just point your camera at that your phone then will take you right to the download screen bill and the stormwatch seven team send out alerts on that app anytime weather does threaten all right, to Prince George's County now, and that is where 7 News is asking questions. After yesterday's fire that forced dozens of people from their homes, specifically, we want to know why firefighters couldn't use the hydrant closest to the condo building that was on fire. 7 News Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell, he is following the story, has been very closely. He joins us live now from the scene in Forestville. And Brad, the big question tonight, is, is this a bigger problem than just the one hydrant? Yeah, it is. It's a problem across the county as well. Look, here's the problem. The apartment complex is right here. The fire was way back there. There were several hydrants within the community. None of them worked. This is the one they had to use. Residents of at least 24 apartments are displaced by the fire, hurting people like Brandon, sadly clutching trash bags with the few things he could salvage. I'm as good as you can be when, you, when your stuff burns or it gets, you know, you can't really get nothing out of your apartment. Others angry and wondering if the fire had to be this bad after learning that this hydrant within sight of the burned apartment was of little use to firefighters who instead had to run a hose through the neighborhood to reach this hydrant 1,200 feet away. It's alarming to us because if it will happen again, how fast is the water going to get to us or how fast are they going to get the fire out? It's not a new issue in Prince George's. For years, fire officials have reported that the privately owned and maintained hydrant systems in many apartment communities don't supply adequate water volumes to fight big fires. As time passes, the system can deteriorate due to rusting within the pipes and also aging of the pipes. PGFD Fire Marshal Justin Shea says the systems are inspected annually and his firefighters know which hydrants don't work and respond accordingly. 7 News asking the management company for this condo community for answers, a manager declining to comment and asking us to leave the property. That resident, Brandon, also leaving, but not before thanking firefighters for preventing even greater loss. All I know is, you know, people did their job, and, you know, if it's something like that, man, look, 
it, stuff happens, but you know, I'm I'm not really one to cause to give blame, man. Well, one employee of this apartment complex telling me that they don't think there is a problem. They actually denied it. But the fire department says that they are working with the community and a third-party vendor to try to come up with a solution. We've reached out to the office of the county executive to see if there is anything being done on, on a larger scale. Because, as I said, we've been talking about this for a very long time. A lot of these systems within these apartments don't work. People who live in them need to understand that they cannot count on those hydrants. In Forestville, Brad Bell, 7 News. That is not good. Brad, thank you. We have new information just in tonight on that other big fire that we followed last night at 6 o'clock. Catholic Charities now say that 27 men who were living in its McKenna house in Northwest D.C. have lost everything. That home is to help people transition out of homelessness. For right now, the men do have a new place to stay, but Catholic Charities has started a funding drive to help them with everything else. They say rebuilding that house could take up to a year. Now to a developing story that we're following in the district where police say they now have captured a 17 year old after another flash mob style robbery at a high end store. Police say that teen and three other men burst into the Arcteric store on 8th Street Northwest just before noon today. And in seconds, they made off with thousands of dollars in high end clothes, but they didn't get far. Police say responding officers tried to stop them and they sped off. But seconds later, the car they were in crashed on K Street and everybody jumped out and ran empty handed. Police believe this same group is responsible for a similar theft just two days ago at Atmos in Georgetown. The thieves there got nearly $20,000 in clothing. The common denominator is that there's intimidation involved. In this particular scenario, all four suspects came in very abruptly. One of them was holding their waistband as if they had a weapon. No weapon was observed, let me emphasize that, no weapon was found, but they did try to intimidate people in the area, people inside the store. And this really is a problem that 7 News has been tracking for quite some time. So far, police aren't saying if it is connected robberies like the ones we've seen earlier this month in Navy Yard, but we are working to try and get answers on that. And new video just in tonight from Gaithersburg, a reminder to never let your guard down. Just watch. You see that guy just walking in the Chick-fil-A, he grabs the purse and away he goes. But the purse owner, though, does not give up. She chases him down and you can see the confrontation just outside through the window. Eventually, the thief gives up and he just runs off. Montgomery County Police now are asking, take a look at the picture right there. It's a very clear picture. If you recognize this guy, police would like to hear from you. And new at 6 o'clock, 7 News on your side is getting some answers about more mail delays for a D.C. community who say they sometimes go weeks without a single delivery. And the D.C. mansion murders, murderer, I should say, heads back to the courtroom. 7 News is on your side with why the man convicted says he deserves a new trial. Well, tonight an investigation is underway into two deaths at the Fairfax County Jail in just two days. In both cases, guards found an inmate unresponsive in their cell. Both were taken to the hospital, both died. At this hour, Fairfax County detectives say there is no sign of foul play in either of the deaths, but it also is not clear exactly how they died. 7 News will continue pushing for answers in these cases. And tonight, an appeals court is weighing whether there should be a new trial in D.C.'s mansion murders. Darren Wint is serving a life sentence for killing a D.C. couple, their son and their housekeeper, before setting their Calorama home on fire back in 2015. In court filings, though, his attorney says he should get a new trial because they weren't allowed to call certain witnesses. There is no timeline for the judge's decision in this case. And breaking news from Annapolis, that's where the Maryland House just passed the newly redrawn congressional district map because the previous map was called unconstitutional because district lines were drawn in what appeared to give Democrats an advantage. Republicans say the new map is still gerrymandering, but that new map now goes to the judge and Governor Hogan for approval. And the tributes continue tonight for former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright. The chair asked all those present in the chamber, as well as members and staff throughout the Capitol, to please rise for a moment of silence in remembrance of the late Honorable Madeleine Albright, our nation's first woman Secretary of State. Albright died one week ago at the age of 84. We are checking, but so far there has been no word on what public services will be held in her honor. We will pass those uh, that information along to you as soon as it's announced.
Well, there's a new honor tonight for late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and it will include a new donation to the Smithsonian. And a D.C. community says that they often go weeks in between their mail deliveries. So tonight, 7 News is on your side, and we're trying to get answers on why there's so many delivery issues for that neighborhood. All new at 6 o'clock, 7 is on your side getting answers for a D.C. neighborhood that says that their mail deliveries are few and far between. And that's causing some very big problems when people's bills don't get to their homes on time. 7 News D.C. Bureau Chief Sam Ford, he has spent two days digging into this, but you've been covering the story for months. And Sam, you finally got some answers. <laughs> Well, Jonathan, about all I can say is I got some responses today, unlike yesterday. And today, a letter carrier showed up here. Me and my wife decided to step in, and now we're emailing people such as the postmaster, a local ANC commissioner, as well as our council member. He also called 7 News on your side, and when we arrived yesterday, Ron Young and his neighbors were livid. We made multiple complaints to the Postal Service themselves and nothing seems to be getting done. We haven't had a regular mail carrier in maybe two years now. I mean, it's, it's just terrible. You be looking for mail, my bills are behind because I know, don't receive them. No response from the Postal Service yesterday, but when we returned today, we noticed a carrier going into their buildings. So, so you got mail today. Is this your regular route? Yes, sir. It is? Uh -huh. Well, they're saying they're not getting mail. No, nah, you can look in the mailbox. They ain't need to check their mail. We did receive a statement today. The Postal Service is committed to making timely mail deliveries. In this situation, carriers couldn't enter the buildings awaiting access keys from each building's management. We apologize for any inconvenience. But residents here deny any key problems. First off, I never saw the mail person come this early in a, uh, in a, during the day. And so I was very surprised. Usually when we do get mail on the occasion, it's usually around 7 to 8 p.m. One resident's building in a different section of the route said that they may have had key issues. I had to run down and catch him for my check. And he had it? Yeah. So what do you think of this? Dad, they need to find a new mail person. And the letter carrier we saw today said to us that this was his regular route. However, Ron Young, who lives here, says this is the first time he has ever seen this letter carrier. And some of the residents here have complained they seem to change letter carriers here every week. Reporting live from Southeast Washington, Sam Ford, 7 News. The plot thickens. Sam, thank you for that. Tonight, as we monitor a tornado outbreak in the Deep South, wow. we are getting a new look at last week's storms. Look at this. Just stop for a second. That is the moment that a twister hit a Jacksboro High School just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. Look at that. The school gym is just destroyed and blown apart. Another camera angle shows the school's principal running through a hallway when the EF3 twister hits. And amazingly, he escaped without injury. Look what's going on out the front door of that school. Holy cow. Glad everybody's okay. And while we track the risk of storms here, that's going to come tomorrow, we do want to take a moment to appreciate the calm today. Ah, new video from the 7 News drone showing the Lois Station covered lot or bridge. This is in North Frederick County. That bridge dates back 140 years and it works just like the charm. It's beautiful. Yeah, that too. is beautiful. And it is quiet out there right now. It is the kind of the lull before we have some active weather tomorrow. So if you have like a patio furniture out or anything Plants. out. Plants. Yeah, plant, it, you know, things that could blow around. Unfortunately, I guess, the way to look at it, it's been so kind of nasty this week that there's probably not a lot of stuff outside. It's yeah. not like it's been gorgeous the last couple of but, days. But are we going to lose all this? I mean, Yeah, are, those are, <laughs> really? they're almost gone now. But tomorrow with gusts of wind consistently at 40 and then you add storms to it, that's not good for those cherry trees. In fact, I just put together this timeline, so I want to show you. We're talking about tomorrow. We are on weather alert, so let's start you out tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. We have the clouds that are going to be around, stray showers, not expecting much for your morning commute. Winds are going to pick up, and they're going to be gusty all day long. They're out of the south, so it's going to be a warm day tomorrow. Between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., so midday into the early afternoon, we're going to see some scattered storms pushing through the area. Locally heavy rain with wind gusts 35 miles per hour or more without the storms. Locally, some of those storms could have stronger winds than that. That's kind of the first wave that moves across. Then we get into the evening, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And that, that's when we have widespread storms around the area. And it's along a cold front. So we'll have damaging winds along that cold front. And that's what's going to be the most uh, impactful part of this weather event for you, other than if you're underneath one of these scattered storms a little bit earlier on in the day. And then we get past 11 p.m. tomorrow night 
We'll have some showers that will linger into the uh, early morning hours on Friday, but the storm threat will come to an end. So that's the overall timing. Now let me walk you through it uh, visually on the future cast. So tonight again, we're fine. We got some clouds mixed in with some breaks. It's actually a really nice evening relative to where we've been uh, this past week. I guess relative to this time of year. It's about where we should be. Temperatures up near 60 today. Tomorrow morning, as I mentioned, few scattered light showers for your morning drive, but nothing that's you know significantly impactful for you. Winds will start to pick up, and that's these lines that you see moving in from the south. Let me take you into the middle part of the morning. Now you're starting to see these areas of yellow and some red, these scattered storms that are going to be pushing through with the potential for the heavy rain, some lightning and the very gusty winds. And that will go into your early afternoon. You see three o'clock here, but let's stop it at six o'clock. OK, here's five o'clock. This is that line I was just talking about, that front that's going to be moving across the area and it will be more widespread. I think everybody gets rain tomorrow especially as this is moving across. So it's seven o'clock, roughly 24 hours from now, a little bit more. This leading edge, so that would be Gaithersburg, Baltimore, down through the Fairfax Loudoun County line, right down through Fauquier County, Rappahannock and Culpeper. Along that leading edge is where the winds are going to be the strongest, the potential for an isolated tornado or two, certainly not out of the question, certainly heavy rain as well after it moves across DC Metro, eight to nine o'clock. Once we get to 11, as I mentioned, this moves on the severe threat ends and we have some lingering showers into the overnight hours. It's not a big rain event for us, but it will be a windy one with gusts all day long. Brand new update here over 40 miles per hour potentially at four o'clock in the afternoon. So if you're going out this evening, enjoy. It's the night before the storm. Temperatures are into the 50s. We're back to seasonable temperatures. We'll look ahead at the seven day forecast. Talk about your day tomorrow specifically coming up in just a few minutes. Olivia, we'll send it out to you. And now the Toyota Sports Desk sponsored by your Toyota dealers. Hello everyone, I'm Olivia Garvey live here at Audi Field. The music's going on right now because the Washington Spirit are going to take the pitch tonight and play, but there was more than that going on here. A press conference just wrapped up for the Washington uh, Coalition of Women's Professional Sports. Over here we have Mayor Bowser and then the majority owner for the Washington Spirit right now, and we'll get into that more later. But today was to show what this coalition all about. It will serve as a supportive organization for all women's sports programs and a professional clubs in the greater Washington, D.C. area. This was a really exciting day for women's sports to show the ge younger generation what it's all about to be a woman in the sport sports world. Uh, Allison McCauley from the Washington Mystic, Senior Vice President, talked today, and also Louise Cook from DC Divas. Take a listen. Role models are essential for girls and underrepresented youth, and the powerful force that we can bring to our girls to help achieve their dreams starts here. You might have a daughter, you might have a granddaughter, you might have a niece, and we do this because she deserves a chance to push past her potential in sports. We do this for her. Thank you. You heard what they talk about. They talk about showing younger women what it means to be in the world of sports. They're trying to get the younger generation to continue to be a part of it, and this coalition is going to start there. They're going to do initiatives to bring the younger generation up and to be a part of the sports world here in D.C. Back to you guys. Olivia, thanks. Coming up next at 6 o'clock, we're just minutes now from the unveiling of a special new honor for the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In less than five minutes, a ceremony is going to begin to honor the memory of late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The Smithsonian's National Museum of American History is going to award her posthumously its Great Americans Medal. Ginsburg's son and daughter will accept that honor on her behalf. They'll also unveil a donation of some artifacts from the justice's time on the high court. Quick look at your day tomorrow. It's going to be much warmer. Temperatures into the mid 70s, some morning showers. Then we're going to see the late day storms and it will be windy throughout the day. Weather alert for you tomorrow. It is hands down, at least the way it looks now, the most active day in our seven day period. We get to the weekend, a few lingering showers, breezy on Friday. We'll do it again on Sunday, but back into the 50s to about 60 degrees. So better than earlier this week, which was yes. awful. 60 and sunny on Saturday looks yeah, that's fantastic. Good. That's good. Nice yeah, job. Tomorrow's going to be kind of nasty. All right, Bill, thanks. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming your way next. Thank you for joining us. Hope to see you back here tonight at 11 o'clock.